Hello, my name is Mikai Stevens. Welcome to Hamlet Development Log Number 14. We work for a company called Haven Studios and making a game for called Hamlet. Uh, and we're talking about some various uh, social aspects to continue on. Uh, so we've uh, put together this little report uh, for a while now, but we're still kind of on the point uh, eight of the live branch, point oh eight, and point ten on the beta branch. Uh, so we started. Uh, let's see, where are we at? <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, you know, I, I, I guess it was May. My bad. This is uh, meant to be uh, May 6th. Um, yeah, sorry. We started, uh, we put this out. We start kind of put the 13 out uh, on May 6th, and, uh, and then we kind of kicked this off uh, soon after that. Uh, cleaned up a lot of this. Might feel like a repeat, but we cleaned up a lot of this, uh, and then we'll talk about kind of where we're going from here. So... Uh, here's kind of where we're, we're thinking about talking about. Uh, we have these uh, pillars, uh, the game engine, um, the interactions, uh, entity, social, the, some rarity, and we're still talking about shipping. So uh, we're kind of uh, in development. Uh, we're pretty much uh, pretty close to where we're kind of want to be. Uh, we're kind of testing out uh, the point 18. Uh, so it's kind of, but a lot of this is still in testing, um, kind of talking about these ideas and where they want to go with it. Well, but we have it split off a little bit better. So uh, we're splitting off the, um, and I wouldn't say splitting off is the inappropriate word, but we are splitting apart our sort of, these are the pillars uh, that the sort of games are built on. We've been talking about a lot of this. This is uh, coming along pretty nicely now. Uh, overall, uh, we realize that we have this town aspect we've been working on. We've been developing um, town uh, and then that sort of fits in with the entities, sort of interact with the town, and then the entities you know, can also interact with the dungeon or combat or some sort of uh, scope of that. Um, it's kind of what we've been sort of thinking about for a very long time, um, and it's sort of coming together in that aspect. We'll have to look at dungeons. Um, these are kind of the far uh, concepts of we're sort of um, building the world right now, uh, which is kind of our focus for the last quite a while, which is kind of what's taken a long time. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it's the the uh, dungeons are taking a while, but anyway. So, uh, so the uh, world uh, is sort of this idea. Uh, how do how do I read this? It's been a little while. Uh, oh, okay. So maybe it's just left or right. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the world is talking about this uh, this idea that you have a node in the world. Uh, it can also have a building. Uh, uh, buildings are important because they they span multiple nodes. Um, your um, you know the building needs to know whether or not that it's you know it's taken up these nodes and what it looks like internally um, and how it interacts with the world uh, and then we have these world items or which are just called item geos right now uh, but we we might rename them to uh, world items they're just sort of what sits in the world so so you have a node you have what sits on top of the node and then you have some sort of item that's in the world um, it seems really straightforward uh, on top of the node, you can also have interactables uh, such as, you know, crates and barrels and um, crafting stations and, you know, which could be a, a, and that's sort of an extension of the building where the building can be just one node. Um, it seems like that's kind of the world we've been working on for a very, very long time and it, it's it's sort of where we want to go. Um, it might feel too, like, uh, node-based, like, you know, um, you know, like as if there is only, you know, but it feels like in in the simulation terms, it feels like that's going to be a good explanation of that the character is on a certain node. Um, and that's, you know, and we realize that's, you know, we could go smaller, but, you know, the technology just doesn't allow for that yet. And we could go for a free roaming system, but that's not really the um, the goal of what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, anyway, so what uh, sits on top of that world is this... Um, so you can see the world uh, is sort of this town idea as well. Um, the town sort of builds up from that idea that it's part of the world and the town will have buildings and, you know, items and crafting stations and various stuff like that. But uh, but then what interacts with that aspect is the uh, the character, um, which is just an entity now. Um, you know, probably could be part of the uh, entity component system is kind of where it would working a lot of so you know we just a lot of people call it entities regardless of whether or not um it's not just quite a you know character might be a, a a good term for it we have you know lots of different names but uh anyway so they'll have uh social interactions 
uh, that's kind of where we're wanting to go. Uh, I don't know when we're sort of putting together uh, on the weekend some plans like that where they'll have social interactions. Uh, they're all friends, uh, and then you know, and then they'll have interactions with the world, which are sort of uh, handled by the character. Um, uh, also, we uh, so so we uh, we kind of improved a little bit of the uh, the playthrough here is that these are the, these are the pillars. Uh, we we talked about you know sort of this um, sort of. Um, uh, anyway, so, and then so these these pillars are sort of the idea, uh, and the, I guess the important thing to note is uh, in talking about the game engine, I do that's kind of where I would like to focus a little bit. But this is kind of the idea of well, the dungeons, the combat, a lot of this is not is reliant on this this world piecing uh, together. So we've uh, split off the the game engine and sort of you know said this is we want this world, and it sort of has this uh, node world. Um, you know, we've been playing with this idea and working with it for a while, and that's kind of, it's taken a couple steps back, but we feel it's its much more important to get the world, um, you know, sort of built and ready to go. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's coming together. Uh, we've been showing demos of that, and maybe we'll show another quick demo of that. Um, uh, but then, so what sits on top of that world is part of these characters. Um, they don't have the social friends. Uh, we're kind of, you know farming that out to different um, aspects, which um, seems to be working out pretty good, but that's sort of where we're taking a step back now and just saying this is what we want to accomplish, is to build the world and then put a character on it, uh, and then how that character interacts with the world, it, you know, through the, um, you know, various systems is sort of, you know, we haven't quite got there, yet, you know, put those back into place, but um, they're coming together. Uh, and then we talked a little bit about this before, um, but this sort of uh, felt like a lot of this, um, uh, and, and through that interactions, uh, it's just kind of basically talking about that we, we have keyboard and mouse as our two interactives. We could have a joypad or any number of other things, but you sort of, uh, you know, it's like you hit W to move forward in a roguelike, and that's uh, through the player or the NPC. Um, you know, with the player is just saying, hey, uh, I'm interacting with the world, and this is what I want you to do. And then the NPC is like, I want to go to the inn, or I want to go to the, you know, the um, the tower, you know, the tower, you know, any number of places that it could go to. Uh, and then sort of that, those two systems should feed into this something, you know, it's called the unit um, in this case, or the entity of the character, whatever it's going to be. Um, this sort of, and that's kind of part of the glue here. Um, that holds this, so it's like you sort of enter the, the mouse, the, enter the keyboard command um, to the player uh, that you actually control, or the NPC, which sends it to the unit, and then the unit interacts with the world or the node based on, that's kind of where we're, we're focusing on. We haven't got this part back into place yet. Um, we've been thinking about a, um, a couple of different ideas, but that's kind of the core gameplay loop that we're trying to accomplish here. Um, to showcase. Uh, anyway, so we're talking a little bit about these, um, uh, the entities, uh, what they're going to be doing. Um, they basically have this four scheduled sort of, uh, they have a downtime, which is like, it's just sleep. Um, but, you know, it's, it's you know, downtime is sort of recognizing the fact that, you know, it's they may not sleep for all that. They might have to do stuff and then they have work time. Uh, and then there's the free time where they can go out and do whatever they want. And then the chat time is, you know, when they're, uh, I think that's the the core loop of our game that we've been working on for a very long time, um, and we think it's great. Um, it gives our, our, our hopefully our NPCs in our world, uh, and hopefully the uh, the uh, player will interact with that same sort of system and be like, these are the things you need to do. Uh, so we sort of put that together with this uh, unit, uh, which is sort of what carries a lot of this out. Um, but this is sort of the world glue that sort of connects the idea. The person uh, or the name is sort of, we talked a little bit about, this sort of separates out the fact that, that we have this person scriptable object now, which is their name, their first name, last name, and their gender. Um, and then that builds up this char this sort of uh, character identifier throughout the, the files, uh, which is sort of like the data components as well. This is sort of the data layer uh, that we've been trying to build up, uh, which is going pretty good. Um, uh, we, we were spending a little bit of time today looking at that data layer, seeing is, is it sort of decoupled from the um, the game object layer. And that's sort of where this uh, this uh, game entity character is now what it's called. Uh, it's just the script glue. It's holding the, uh, the person, the entity, the unit, a lot of these scripts together. Um, 
and it's uh, you know so I think we actually renamed that a little bit in the I think we called it Game Entity Geo or something like that now. Uh, anyways, so uh, the other thing too is like we have this base uh, NPC sort of uh, you know um, entity, and then that sort of interacts with this unit, uh, which sort of tells it where it wants to go what it's trying to accomplish and how it all ties together and then we have this final component where we're talking about this rpg character uh which we separate out a lot of that out right now if it's, it's kind of where we're trying to almost go next but it was realizing that you know to get all of this to you know to get this this is what's been working now we're trying to add this piece back onto top of that uh we eventually want to get that solid so it's like we have these um, really uh, interesting characters uh, interacting with the world before we start adding in the because you know the strength doesn't care about the character um, it doesn't really um, interact with anything in particular uh, it just sort of determines how much damage you do how much weight you can carry uh, we have like a base weight sort of idea uh, just base stats and then the characters will um, you know, specifically the RPG character will, will continue, and then they'll have items. Uh, you can sort of see the axe as we picked up as part of this system, but the axe is sort of meant to be like, hey, this is a tool that's uh, that interacts with this world, but it sort of facilitates chopping down trees or um, a pickaxe to... Um, so those are not... They're, they're items in a sense, but they're, um, you know, which they're very simple in that terms of... Um, Anyway, so we just uh, we carried this a little bit further um, that these um, these characters uh, they'll have um, these you know, there's a there's a lot of this uh, they also have this uh, something called flex time which is sort of it's like a work sort of free time where you're supposed to be working but you can do uh, various things um, and then so they'll have a lot of different scheduled um, characters with that. Um, uh, anyway, so then uh, then we talked about this pretty pretty extensively. We cleaned this up uh, pretty massively. Um, uh, basically, our our, our our downtime or our time uh, in this total is at 24 hours that we were talking about last week, uh, and we just kind of went through and cleaned up a lot of this and sort of you know um, put it in a uh, documented form that's saying you know there are um, it's sort of the idea that the originally there was 400 uh, days. Uh, 400, 400 uh, days ticks or ticks in a day um, it's just days ticks for some reason years ticks but anyway so uh, now we're at these 360 uh, which seems really great um, so for eight hours is 90 ticks so that's 360 divided by four it's just kind of trying to math this out um, and then um, so the downtime is talking about with a 24-hour goal your uh, your rarity your base um, your base uh, sleep time at poor is 10 hours. So it's kind of your base sleep time. And then as you improve your character stats, your rarity of the beds and various things, you can get it up to six hours. So that kind of gives us that that um, ramp in the game, um, you know, base. And we, I think it's a, oops, uh, I think that's a mistake. This is uh, nine hours, my bad. And this is actually, uh, May 7, I think this is, yeah, this is May. I think we're on, yeah, switched over. Anyway, so that rarity is sort of just talking about this idea that um, that based on the um, what you're sort of progressing in the skill, um, it seems like a pretty cheap, easy way to do it. We've uh, been building tons of systems, and, uh, you know, you can sort of see that we have a really nice way to sort of link. Um, it's, it's not... You know a good formula but it sort of gives us this idea of you know hey we have um you know it, it felt good and it's sort of like the idea um you know i was talking a little bit about the idea of, of you know humans you know can get you know 12 hours of sleep but you know they you know and it's it's not really you know based on a lot of factors but uh, in the game it you know as you simulate this out and make it you know interesting I think this will add this really cool aspect to it um, and give you reason to sort of um, move forward with that. Uh, so anyways, I think that's the last slide here. Uh, so we have the Hamlet. Uh, we're definitely talking about the point eighteen plan. Uh, we are sort of uh, taking a step back from that a little bit, um, but that's kind of where we want to go. Uh, it's sort of, um, it's, oh, you know, and this sort of talks about this idea that 
there's this idea that you have these um, the adventure side and the world side um, and this sort of you know splits it off into a little bit uh, different way to think about that where you have uh, the adventure has uh, dungeons and towns and characters uh, sort of like the RPG aspects of it uh, and then the world is has the um, the nodes the buildings and the dungeons so these are just another way to think about that um, and um, so uh, let me go to the geo game. Um, geo game. Well, I guess we could talk a little bit. It's probably really hard to see, but we've sort of split this off pretty uh, extensively here. Uh, you can see we can use we use the Code Monkey uh, utilities for a lot of um, um, you know uh, it's kind of just a test. Um, I don't think it actually. Yeah, it's not displaying the UI, but this is kind of an idea of just running a test of. It's, um, but we've, uh, you know, so we've included that uh, as one of the core libraries. We have the extensions. Uh, Game Kingdom is sort of uh, just as alphabetically, but it's like this idea of the Game Kingdom. Uh, and I don't think, yeah, so you can see the Game Kingdom is working on various steps. But it's meant to be more of a test of the extension of what's happening next. Um, and then you can see sort of here's our examples of our tiles uh, that we're trying to do. Um, I guess we could sort of showcase because we've been working on this a little bit, but um, you can sort of see, um, this just adds in an RTS camera, um, and our graphics are pretty bad, but what this is trying to represent um, is the fact that if I look at this node right here, you can see that it has this, uh, this road tile that sort of gives this idea that it creates um, this um, path, and then once, as the path gets bigger and bigger, uh, I think street, yeah, street probably needs a little bit more work, um, but street's meant to be like a single tile path, and then causeways and uh, thoroughfares and um, highways are going to be, you know, like that's like the King's Highway, so it's like this upgrade system for the uh, road, so I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, and then also we, we've been working on a little bit, um, these are test buildings right now, um, where you, we're kind of testing this idea. Um, where you can sort of, uh, I think you actually have to go into a, um, the, um, the dungeon, you know, so this is just, this is definitely, uh, beyond what we're trying to accomplish right now, but as we work on things, um, we, you know, it's like you want to sort of put some of this together, but as the ceiling goes away, you get access to inside the house and, and sort of, it's meant to be like, how do I test, uh, you know, nodes like this and sort of build up, um, uh, it's sort of a pr uh, procedural way to generate buildings and houses and stuff like that is kind of where we're going with that. So a lot of that sort of, uh, and then under here you can also see, um, so there's a lot of roads examples. Um, then you can see sort of the house, uh, this is just not a house in general. Uh, it's just meant to be a building like of a house or, you know, building. But uh, And then we have the um, uh, sort of some of the, um, the ideas of, you know, different uh, topics. Uh, which is kind of a sort of a, uh, I, I, I was calling it a DLC, but it's it's more like, it's not the proper name for it. It's more of like a game package um, that, you know, this is sort of the uh, post-18 post update is uh, talking about this kingdom update, um, you know, which is not, it's not really, we're trying to build a larger game, but we're focused on the Hamlet version of it. And so some, some iteration of that is going to be uh, included uh, with the social aspects we've been talking a little bit about in the, in the entities uh, a lot. Uh, so a lot of this, you know, the schedules, what the people are going to be doing, uh, and then that doesn't include the, uh, the, art, the kingdom aspects. Uh, anyways, then we have the new um, the game library, uh, which includes, um, yeah, uh, it's just the, this is the, uh, the starting, hand. well, there's actually nothing here, but uh, we'll show that in a second. Um, that includes the units, the nodes, uh, the entities are sort of this idea that they are, uh, I believe you can see the ad, it's called Game Entity Geo now, uh, and then it's just the character controller, uh, and then we just have various uh, utilities, uh, a lot of settings, and uh, we've actually really liked the way we're sort of organizing this now, and so we have Game Meta, uh, Game Settings are sort of this idea, oh, I guess um, I wasn't quite ready, but um, it's sort of this idea, like, uh, various uh, settings in the game. 
the font sizes, uh, various UIs uh, and stuff, and then it has this idea of uh, we implemented this a uh, long time ago where also suns and uh, and then destroy trees, for instance. Uh, when you break down a tree, uh, does it actually destroy the tree or leave a stub? You know, just various things like that that we will tweak. Uh, and then, then that's sort of, uh, uh, we have this UI library. I don't think we have any, uh, we have this test area, but I don't think we've set this up correctly. Um, it's sort of trying to get this idea that uh, when we, we, we um, redid a lot of this uh, idea, um, we wanted to, uh, you know, include some, we didn't want to include a lot of UI, but then we realized, uh, anyway, so this is the new sort of point 18 update. Uh, it looks quite familiar, but there's a few, uh, quite a few things here, such as the menu is not quite as um, robust as it used to be. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to clean up, and uh, we're passing that in. Maybe it's passing in through the text manager. That's probably something to think about for me. But anyway, so um, you can still, the campaign's kind of worked a little bit because we ruined, but we can actually still go back into this. Uh, we've broken our, uh, our things. Um, but, you know, and, and then, you know, some of the development build and some of that is because we haven't updated our, um, anyway, so we can boot right back into the Hamlet. Um, it loads a little bit quicker. Uh, you can see this is kind of then that little Tusk world we've been showing off and then our tiny people. Uh, we haven't included or actually um, the Honeta uh, characters uh, yet. Um, and it's just for, you know, just uh, these were working. Um, they also give us a... Um, is there a way to do that quickly? They also give us the access, access to a female character, so we kind of been playing with that, the gender, a little bit. Uh, anyway, so then you can boot up into the the, uh, the starting Hamlet, uh, and that's sort of like this idea that this this um, this menu system is all part of this game Geo, which is sort of like this new way to handle, um, which also includes slots and you know various things. Um, uh, you know that we need to clean up and improve uh, but then that actually feeds right into this um, this game library uh, the version 3 of the game library which is a very much you know slimmed down version uh, which boots right back into the um, into the uh, um, into the starting Hamlet which is sort of this and it's just basically the same Hamlet size uh, we just are you know, trying to test out the node world. So the goal here, as you can see in the new world, this new idea is that you have, uh, same with everything else, you have this tile-based system. It's, uh, you know, so it's like every single little, you know, the guy, uh, he'll pick, a, you know, where he's going to stand. Um, he doesn't stand on, you know, water, uh, which, I, um, yeah, anyway, so these are just water tiles. And then, you know, so it creates a pretty um, great thing. Um, and then we, uh, you can sort of see the, uh, we, we haven't uh, implemented the, um, we're thinking about doing a different sort of UI with the, uh, the scheduling of the characters. Um, oh, yeah, so I think that's, uh, yeah, it's just probably, um, oh, it might be the text of the schedule. Yeah. Oh, yep, that's definitely why. Well, yeah, it's probably one of the reasons why the schedule relies on a text that's not there uh, anyway so that's uh that's, that's that's really it's a little bit uh taking a step back uh for the point 18 but i think it's much cleaner in terms of um you know putting the rest of this together and that's that's it you know um we have text mesh pro and a few um you know these folders we have the logos of of the company um you know, just various and then we only have the uh tiny tune uh right now uh, which is the Tiny Tune people from um, this little uh, we've been work, uh, you know. So you you know you can see the um, the uh, cop we're using for our other demo game here, and then we have um, we're not going to use the zombies, but you know here's we do have the female and the two male models, which are actually um, I believe uh, are together right here in the. Um, Yes, you can see that they're um, here. You can see that the two there's two male models here. Which, do I just turn these on? Yeah, just turn these on. Uh, which I definitely they're they're uh, more like uh, civilian, and uh, you know we talked a little bit about. But uh, as developing the um, developing the entities, it it doesn't really matter which you know as long as they they have sort of characters um and then we've just been testing out various graphics and you know what what we think is great um even though we're not going to be using these 
um, we'll still we'll probably still be using the um, the uh, characters uh, the uh, three free characters from Honata, Honata which is what uh, you know we actually just spent uh, another uh, another quite a few days looking at hundreds of, you know just hundreds of different characters on the asset store uh, and this is the one we've been using for quite a while um, you know, on the outside, a lot of it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of a low poly look, so it's good. It's kind of what we're going for. Um, but the thing about it is the fact, um, I guess we're sort of, you know, um, uh, and I think this is one of the packs we're thinking about mostly, um, cause we get a rod of, we get a, this is kind of the variety we get to have. Uh, and then you can sort of see the customization of the characters, you know, choosing your hair color uh, and stuff like this. So it gives us a lot of, uh, plus it gives us a lot of, uh, you can see uh, hammers, saws, um, just hundreds of different NPCs that would be um, pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh, but you can sort of, you know, um, we're not trying to go for a look like this. Um, you know, even though this does look pretty cool, um, I've, I've seen this one before, but it's sort of, it, it's real, it's realistic, but you know, we just don't have that, um, that sort of, you know, once you go that sort of style, you have to include that style everywhere. And you, you know, it's just, it would be, um, you know, your art director would be like, wait a second. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, and it's just like, there are some more. Um, this one's actually was one of the other ones we were looking at a little bit, um, or is this one? I think we are looking at it, yeah, for a little bit, just because it sort of gives that, that a more RPG sort of aspects to it, where you have the male and female models, but, you know, here again, you only get two sort of models, and we need hundreds, um, so if you can just kind of do like a RPG character, um, there's, you know, we've actually gone through hundreds of these, um, you know, and they just, they vary from various things, um, um, I think I like, this one's pretty cool, but yeah, because it's just like, it gives you a lot of really cool combat animations with sword and shield, which I think is great, but it just, it, there's a lot of certain styles to these, um, you know, and it's hard to sort of, you know, find out, you know, exactly what, um, these are always slightly different, so, uh, you know, from the very corny, to the very like animation styles to the very you know uh, Warhammer or I don't know whichever you want to call it but um, it's you know it's just we haven't really um, you know there's a lot of like you know orcs and you know various non um, non characters uh, you know from the very you know just the really temp um, these are interesting because they have a lot of main animations but they just don't have the uh, the uh, style there so um, I guess I'm not sure why I'm getting off on this tangent, but that's, uh, this is Joy. Uh, here's a somewhat interesting one that we're, uh, I don't think, yeah. They have that same sort of low-poly cartoony sort of fantasy, but it's a little bit too, um, you know, too high, uh, you know, you know, like, uh, sparkly or something, I would say. Uh, you know, but there's, it's like, it's a really massive... Um, hard thing to sort of think about in terms of where um, I think this one's actually yeah this one's actually pretty cool I think I want to say uh, just in terms of I like the style of the characters um, and it, it feels like you can get you know quite a bit out of it but um, yeah so we're gonna have to try to figure out what exactly uh, the polygon ones um, are interesting but they, uh, they, you know, it's, 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 it's a very specific style. Uh, and then once you go down for this style, I like the variety of them. And they have a lot of cool things, you know, and they have a lot of, you know, massive variety and cool things you could go with. But once you sort of, you know, you can look at the world that they sort of have to inhabit is this sort of very, uh, very artistically different world. And um, that's one thing we like about the uh, Honeta. They seem to fit within... Uh, again, but there's just mil uh, so many out there. Um, oh, I don't even think I've seen this pack either. Um, but, um, oh yeah, it's, this is a little bit more um, cartoony, 
you know, anime sort of, you know, so there's just so many styles to try to um, pick from. So we're going to have to see us. It's probably going to be one of the last things we uh, we focus on, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, we are leaning pretty heavily towards the uh, RPG pack, um, you know, from Honad, just because it gives us so many characters. Um, I think this is another one we we're looking at. Um, I don't like how these guys, you know, it's like they don't, yeah. Um, yeah, so here's another one that sort of adds in. Um, I'd like that they have bows and com and, and characters. Um, that's the other uh, diff difficult thing for us is that for a pure RPG sort of, uh, you know, knight archer sort of, uh, excuse me, I didn't mean to bump my mic there. For the knight archer sort of generally, you know, RPG archetypes, that's good. But we're sort of thinking about more in terms of how can I showcase the world and what kind of the NPCs in the world will look like. And that's um, one thing that's really quite difficult is how to sort of get this. Um, and you can also look at the, uh, can I look up this one at, uh, by itself? Um, if you, yeah, if you look at sort of um, some of their packages here. No, oh, no, that was not, uh, how do I click on the, Um, and you think about like from in terms of you know they also have various different art styles as well uh, we think that sort of it's, this fits with more you know what uh, generic people are doing but um, but you could sort of think of like and we also like the space ones we've been using these for uh, testing out in various space things but uh, and they also have females and pirates and bandits but uh, and then some of their dungeons don't actually fit with what we're doing but you can see sort of the uh, the vast variety of here, but then these characters, because they're sort of built off this sort of similar idea, uh, they also include zombies. Um, so we might see a lot of this here. Um, let's see, where is the... Uh, I guess I'm kind of looking at these various packages, but um, yeah, so we, we won't be... Uh, the bandits, is this the... Um, uh, the pirates, so we might actually include the pirates at some point too. So, uh, and that's kind of what we like about this too. And then here you go, here's the bandits sort of idea that there's a lot of really cool uh, bandits that also could feel like they could play a massive role. And I think that's just sort of, it handles a lot. Uh, and the other thing too is look at the, uh, these guys right here is like, we can still get that fantasy sort of arch types here. We have knights, archers, um, you know, sh uh, shields, berserkers, all sorts of, um, uh, and then too, these guys also have a nice progression. Um, is there a way to show their gear progression here? Maybe, maybe not in terms of, but there's a there's a lot of nice gear progression here. You got the, you know, the leather to the, you know, to the golden armors to the, um, so I, I like that as well, that it gives us that nice, um, so it sort of handles a lot of things, uh, including the female sets that are, um, so it handles the bandits as a sort of a faction that sort of could show up. It handles the NPCs. Um, it handles uh, a lot of the, um, you know, here's the, uh, the females. I th so there's, I think it adds a bunch of, um, hopefully they'll fit within the two, um, you know. Um, aspects of that so I think I like I like all the aspects that it gives us here um, for rel for a low relatively low price it gives us um, the bandits it gives us the pirates it gives us these um, you know uh, you know millions of you know hundreds of thousands or you know how many ever uh, is these the I, no I think this is the exact same one oh here we go here's sort of that armor progression you can see there's definitely an awesome armor progression um, and it's, it's sort of low poly where we can handle, uh, we hope that we can handle enough. And it sort of, it feels pretty, um, I like some of the, uh, some of these higher tier armors. Um, maybe not, they're not perfect, but they, uh, I think they're really great. Uh, and that's sort of like the difference between that and a, uh, mid, let's see if I can spell medieval. You know, versus a, you know, some of the high-end, you know, there's some great, uh, like this one's actually a, 
it's like a really great characters you know it almost feels like a um, you know a character straight out of um, the you know some old you know some RPG books um, and stuff like that but in terms of you know getting you know for one character that's great but you know when you have thousands and thousands of characters um, and there are various things that we could do um, here's a little bit more it just feels a little bit more realistic and maybe that's great but for our, the terms of what we want to do um, it doesn't give us you know from a single player sort of focused RPG that would be great um, but it doesn't really give us the town and the um, the building aspects that, of, that we really want to put together um, yeah of a nice I wouldn't say it's not it's uh, simple <laughs> I've been looking at a lot of castles trying to figure out uh, how to put them together so that's kind of a, a good overall you know aspect of the art and we're kind of heading with this um, yes, I mean there's there's always amazing you know character art that that it gives you a lot of different styles but it, you know it's like 13,000 polygons is great and you know we could use less polygons and stuff and it's not it's not the polygon count but it's sort of the the the, the filling the world with with things and I think that's much more exciting you know there are some really just amazing characters out there like here's a uh, yeah here's a nice worker I think there's a female version of this as well where it's like it gives us a lot of you know cool options that we can do um, but then we would just have you know two characters you know copied over and over again and it's like anyway so yeah it's one of the things i've been working on a lot uh in the background so i kind of wanted to just do a showcase of that uh maybe it's not the best video for that but uh anyway so um that gives us sort of this idea and that's kind of where we are in terms of um um let's see where where would be a good sort of talking point from this is that we're sort of you know uh at the you know you can see we're working on the world the nodes and the buildings uh, without the dungeons uh, buildings are sort of a side project right now where their main focus i don't think i have a slide for this the main fo well it's kind of this i guess is the main focus right now because um, you can see that we can interact with the the, the world in a our RTS sort of aspect of it, but we need to start adding back in the, the um, and we may not, so that's definitely, uh, I should pre preface that, we may, we, we eventually will add back in the adventure mode and the ability to walk around with a character, but right now it's just not conducive to developing the game. Um, you know, we need to see what the characters are doing and how the world's interacting and, and go up and down and view various things. So it's like, it's more going to go into a development sort of status right now. But this is kind of the, the, the reason for sort of the, the version three, uh, you know, it's a couple months, um, uh, is because we wanted to split off the most important, most, the most important aspects. And that's kind of why you can see this here in the um the um the project files is that we can see now it's much cleaner in terms of what we want to do um in fact i th well I, i'm not going to do it here but i'm pretty sure i can wipe out this entire uh kingdom folder uh right yeah uh, somewhere in here anyways i'm pretty sure i can wipe yeah uh yeah here it is I can wipe out this entire kingdom folder and it would still run just fine and that's kind of what we and the kingdom folder is sort of meant to be this uh next uh, next aspect sort of incorporates a lot of different ideas that we're trying to work on in the background but um those are not coming to the forefront just yet and there's obviously a you know you know but I mean, that's kind of why the the goal of the game is just to you know the the focus is to come out with some you know for the hamlet side of things uh, and that's and so when we get back to this and you can sort of see that sort of taken off a little bit better um, I think in terms of you know getting this the, the world interactive which you can see here and getting our character interactive and then getting the character to um, you know based on the NPCs and that's sort of like where does that fit into the Hamlet style things where you know where you're trying to sort of um, you start out as a, you know, and it's like, do we build up the survival sort of character aspects of it? Um, and where it's like you sort of, um, you know, chop down trees and collect resources to build up, sort of survive. 
and then go into this sort of then you know start getting NPCs to group up with you and sort of start rebuilding you know this this uh, world or live in this world quite a bit and that's sort of where we want to go but you know where that distinction lies is sort of the the fine point of you know Hamlet 1.0 versus Hamlet you know, 1.5 where we start adding in more NPCs more interactions um, uh, we we do feel like that it, it is important to sort of get these sub aspects in because we're not trying to make a so I mean maybe we should be making a sole RPG sort of um, you know dungeon crawler game or you know dungeon crawler with um, sort of like a wayward <laughs> you know are we making a wayward which is like a, uh, which is pretty cool, uh, pretty cool. I guess we, you know, have been showcasing games, so we find um, quite, uh, oh yeah, we're looking up Titan Quest for um, Wayward, here it is, uh, is a, so, you know, it's relatively cheap, uh, um, you know, eight bucks for an RPG, but you can sort of, it's 2D, but it sort of incorporates the fact that you're in this world, and you can actually go, uh, and this is sort of, we talked quite a bit about this idea that you can sort of see this is the world we're building. Um, not, not, not this game, but we have trees for, you know, to chop down woods to build buildings and stuff like that. And they have water and sand and, and, and these various resources in the game. We actually think this is a pretty cool game. Uh, but the difference here is that you actually, uh, I think there's a stair down right here. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, and these screenshots don't help. When you screen up. But anyway, so you go, this is uh, one game scene, uh, which is simple, and then you go into the second game scene, which is the dungeon, which is a kind of a, a generated dungeon, and then you can sort of, um, uh, it's with some other aspects of this. Um, yeah, and then you can kind of get into this overworld prospect, but um, the idea sort of is, yeah, and here's some more, uh, I'm not sure. I haven't, well, I haven't seen this as far in the game yet. But, uh, but you know, so like, you know, the aspect here is, you know, um, trying to build this overworld example, uh, which is kind of, I think this fits great uh, right here. Because uh, it sort of fits in the world that we're seeing now. And then we're, we're obviously in 3D. Um, definitely where we want to go with this. Um, uh but you know, and these these people with their early access can be a lot more accomplished, and maybe they'll have a lot more. Um, but you know, we're sort of like you know, like Graveyard Keeper is sort of this other great example of, you know, we have uh, we actually Graveyard Keeper is actually interesting. Well, it's Static World, which is, you know, where it's like you do get this sort of uh, this is the town aspect of you have these people, but they're really static. So we kind of want to meld the sort of two ideas where we have this town sort of in. This is again is in 2D, so it's like it's definitely one of the things we want to to do. So, but you know, it's pretty cool where you can sort of have this character, um, you know, and uh, you know, and a lot of that is too is like you know, uh, with Wayward and with Graveyard. Well, Graveyard is sort of a set built. Like you, this is sort of their building examples where you 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 get a set house, which I thought is actually pretty interesting, and then you get build places. And we don't, you know, we're sort of trying to find the balance there of how do we you know, and wayward, you can actually just build, you know, prison architect style, just start laying down walls and build, put a bit of bed. I think the difference there is you don't have to say, oh, it's not a room, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's just completely up to you, um, which we kind of want to do get to that aspect a little bit. Um, we've been playing with that idea for a while, you know, what, what kind of, um, building styles do we want you know do you just um we definitely you know we obviously talked a lot about the idea of having the bed rarities and um and talk um uh, i don't think we should um sorry i'm thinking if i want to get into some of the i guess we since we talked a lot about art we'll talk about some of the um um we are looking Uh, maybe I can't find it. Um, anyways, there's a uh, little... Uh, uh, maybe I can't find it right now. But there's a, a cool little um, bedroom set in here that we were looking at that was like, oh, that's... I don't know. It's not this one. But it's just this sort of idea of, of, of having a bed that you can sort of place down based on colors. 
um, you know, and then you know, and then you know, having the right art style as well. We, you know, there's some. I think there's like high fantasy and low fantasy, and you know, uh, here's a, an example. Um, I think this is sort of a little not quite the style we're going for, even though it's low poly. It's sort of uh, you know more fantasy, high fantasy or mid fantasy or something. Um, there is a bed with a bunny. <laughs> it has bunny slippers. <laughs> Don't ask me why, but ah yes, here's my bunny slippers. <laughs> Uh, but hey, uh, and I like it, just, uh, this view right here really sells me. It fits the style, um, but it also has these, uh, different bed colors, uh, you know, which is then like, you know, oh, I prefer the red bed. Well, that's, uh, this is poor to legendary or something, but anyway, so that's, uh, one of the aspects of what we're looking at here, um, is this idea, um. And, man, you know, the bunny slippers, you know, who would not want bunny slippers? But uh, anyways, maybe that's not going to be. But this sort of this idea that you, you know, enter a house, uh, will scale the bed down quite a bit. And then, you know, and then it will be like, oh, hey, um, you know, maybe we'll remove a pillow. So there's just one pillow. I don't know if you can remove both. That's oftentimes is like these, this pillow is like embedded into the model. So it's like, oh, great. I mean, um, yeah, it may not be, but it's tough to say but you know it's nice that there's various colors and then we can actually add more um, you know so that'd be really cool so that's kind of one of the things I think this is on my yeah it's on um, anyway so that's kind of the idea there I was just trying to you know get some ideas of the art and sort of the direction we're going um, but yeah and then this one has uh, research and, and tool, you know a lot of that but you know, it's not kind of the style we're going for um, it might be simpler, you know, Wayward might be simpler and easier, but we're sort of, you know, we're, I think we're kind of, the scope's getting bigger and bigger, so it's like, how do we limit that? Anyways, I'm sure this video's over an hour, so, <laughs> oh yeah, 47 minutes, so anyways, uh, short devlog video, so hopefully got a lot out of it and sort of see where we're going with that, um, and sort of the aspects of this, uh, so I just, you know, want to appreciate everybody that sort of, uh, you know, gets these updates through these, um, through for Hamlet through here and um, and it's there's something simple about having this is um, you know I, th I would really want to keep this around for a very long time because it gives me this idea of this is kind of the core um, concepts of what we're trying to accomplish and we might get back to some of that you know sooner um, anyway so thanks very much you have a great day I'll see everybody uh, next week and then uh, hopefully we get some game designs and other stuff uh, out too so Take care. Thanks for checking out Tamlet uh, Game Development Log uh, number 15, I believe. You take care.